Welcome everybody to another Wednesday Live. Thank you for joining. Today we're going to bring back an old staple that I don't think we've visited here on the channel at all this year, in fact, but it was something that we did throughout last year. A lot of you seemed to quite enjoy this. It seemed to be a good way to kind of collate a bunch of the coolest stuff that we received month on month and put it to you in a nice little package and maybe drew your attention to some guitars that perhaps you had missed throughout the stream of the month. It just seemed to be a good way of delivering to you the goods. And I wanted to bring it back to kind of tail off uh, 2022. We're back with the top fives. So hopefully this will carry on uh, for December as well, maybe even into the new year. But for now anyway, we're gonna take a look at what I personally consider to be the finest five instruments that I've seen come through the doors this month. So. Without further ado, let's get into the selection, shall we? I'm gonna start in a rather unusual place for guitar number one. Now this is, may not be something that you're expecting to see, but it's pretty cool. And I think a lot of the people who saw the video for this uh, will agree because their comments seemed to uh, certainly come across this way. This is the V for people who maybe didn't previously like Vs, it seems. So this really gorgeous uh, amber red burst kind of sets this off in a way that not many other Vs go out of their way to do. So, a bit of context, this is the Gibson Custom Shop version now of the Dave Mustaine Flying V EXP is tagged onto the end there. Not exactly sure what it stands for, but here we are. This is the top line version of Dave Mustaine's newest signature collaboration with the fine folks at Gibson. So you may have seen the, um, the Coreline USA model, which was a really popular guitar. You had the silver finish, and you had a really nice natural wood finish as well, but that wasn't good enough, was it, for the main man. The Ginger Furore of thrash metal deserved something a little bit better. So they went up to the custom shop level and incorporated some of these gorgeous finishes like this amber burst. So let me just reel off a couple of specs. I'm not gonna get too specky in this video because anything else that you wanna know that I don't cover, you can find out on our website by the links down in the description. This video is really a chance for me to kind of try and convey some of my own thoughts and occurrences that um, sort of came to me as I was playing these guitars for the first time, some of the things that I thought, I wanna try and loop back and revisit those ideas. So that's what we're gonna get into mainly, but just to give you a little bit of context, obviously a gorgeous figured maple top on top of a uh, mahogany body, 25 and a half inch scale uh, mahogany neck on this guitar, which I thought was a little bit interesting considering most Gibsons are usually a little bit shorter than that. 24 frets, which hasn't been done very often at all in Gibson's history. And then the electronics, we've got Seymour Duncan, Thrash Factor, Signature Dave Mustaine pickups as well, which are kind of based, I believe, loosely on the JB, uh, at least in the bridge position. So those are the specs. That's the kind of, you, don't, you didn't even really need to know that. What you need to know is how does this thing handle E-flat tuning 
I'm going to go mid 90s era Megadeth riffs. Let's find out. handles them just fine, I would say. So I wanted to tune this thing to E flat and kind of put across that point because um, those are some of my favorite Megadeth tones when the band did experiment with a little bit of, obviously they tune lower now, uh, but back in the mid nineties, they were experimenting with E flat. And when I put this guitar in that tuning, it just spoke in that particular way that really suited that sound. It's a little darker. Um, it still has the aggression, but these new pickups, I actually find, despite their name, they're actually quite a warm sounding thing. You'd think for something called a thrash factor, it would have all this horrible sizzly, sibilancy high end and stuff. It has that enough to cut through, but I think the combination of the real nice chunk of mahogany on the body, the really secure uh, stop tail piece, just everything adds up to this really beefy tone and it suits Dave's style. It also kind of suits my style personally when I go for any of those higher gain sounds because it's just a really nice smooth sound. But at the same time it cuts and it's tight and it's precise. Let me give you another example. Let's go for a little bit of a cleaner, uh, cleaner tone, but I can't resist putting a little bit more filth on. A little bit more context for you by the way. Rev D20 amplifier set pretty clean. Effects from a Line 6 HX effects as always and the gain tones in this particular case are coming from a Friedman BE Overdrive Deluxe. Here's some cleans. <laughs>
It's very cool. This is one of those things that um, I didn't know the world needed, and perhaps it doesn't need it, but the fact that it exists really does make you want it, doesn't it? it certainly does for me anyway. So if you were after one of the new Mustangs from the Gibson collection, and you just weren't satisfied with what the USA Core line had to offer, now you have something truly special in the form of this very nice red amber burst, limited edition version of the custom shop version of the Dave Mustaine Gibson signature. Right, that's guitar number one. Let's move along to number two. And this guitar is so cool, by the way, it even has its own stand outside of the rest of the rack of instruments. Okay, now guitar number two, here's something pretty special from the Fender Custom Shop. Now it's always nice to see Fenders arrive, but Certainly when you're in my position and anyone else here fortunate to work at the shop, you see a lot of them. So the effect kind of maybe doesn't last in quite the same way that it does for you watching when you see these things uh, come live on the website and you see the videos and stuff, it seems very fresh, but we of course see them perhaps more often than a lot of you do. So the thing that makes it exciting is when new blood is added to the mix, either in the form of a new model or in this case, the form of a new builder. So we were lucky this month to receive two guitars from the two newest additions to the Master Builder roster at the Fender Custom Shop. Uh, this one really kind of caught my attention in particular as being a very, very nice example of a 51 Telecaster. And this is from David Brown. So one of the two newest builders, along with Andy Hicks at the Custom Shop, uh, Master Builders, I should say. So master built fenders are in their whole another stratosphere by this point, you know, in terms of price wise, in terms of availability, in terms of spec choices, they just their own living, breathing, beastly world. So for David Brown to make an entry into this game, he kind of had to do something a little bit different, a little bit unique. And what struck me about this is that although this is a heavy relic guitar, it's not overly done. It would be very easy to overdo this, and I'm sure, as is always the way with the Relic debate, to some of you watching, this will be absolute heresy anyway, and you won't like it at all. It's way too much, but I think for a lot of people, you can see this is a pretty tasteful Relic job, and the thing that stood out to me the most is actually the feel of the neck, because it's got this kind of um, fairly enhanced V profile, which for a 51, you don't see very often. And of course, it has the Cunife wide range humbucking pickup in the neck and a reverse angled 51 uh, no caster bridge pickup. Uh, other basic specs uh, will of course be on the website but I want to show you how it sounds more than anything else and then try and convey some additional thoughts. That's kind of the point of this. So there's been plenty of output from the Fender Custom Shop that we've seen this month but as I said this is the one that kind of stood out to me, and I'm about to hopefully show you why that is, once I get it in tune. I know this doesn't make for very good live stream viewing, but it has to be done. Here we go.
So there we are, something quite interesting I think, and it's not something that you get from a lot of Telecasters for a couple of different, fairly significant reasons there. The neck humbucker of course, the V-neck really does add a very different dimension to the feel of the whole thing. But also, this reverse tele bridge pickup really does work very well too, because suddenly you are able to exploit more of the high end from the high strings without fear of the treble being a little too aggressive, and you're reassured that you have the snap from the low strings as well. It's the same kind of Hendrix trick. You see it employed on strats a lot, but you don't see it on Telecasters too often. So I think that coupled with my uh, current fascination and massive admiration for the wonders of Andy Summers guitar tones and playing, I think those two things together made this quite an appealing little option. And if you too have been looking in the realm of master built fenders recently, I think this is a very good opportunity to explore the work of a new master builder who I'm sure will continue to deliver some pretty, pretty interesting and very cool, wonderful guitars for many, many years to come. Right, that's guitar number two. Let's move on to guitar number three, shall we? Is everything okay? Yeah. Okay, to anyone watching this live, which I hope several of you are, I don't know if we've got any little sound issues, but we're gonna try and rectify it quickly before I start talking about this guitar. All right, I'll do a quick test for you. All right, I'll get this tuned up as well before I start talking about it. This is what happens guys when you go live, you never really know. And I think one little cable let this entire operation down there for just a brief moment, but I don't think it's gonna spoil the video. If you're still watching by this point, thank you very much. And we're just gonna carry on as though nothing happened. I'm gonna snap my fingers and we're gonna revert back to how we were about two and a half minutes ago. Here we are with guitar number three then of November 22. And I wanted to mix it up entirely here. So we started out with something perhaps that you didn't expect in the form of that Gibson Mustaine V. And you see an awful lot of um, classic style, shall we say, vintage style instruments here from us. That's what's very popular, but what is equally popular and perhaps not um, talked about and displayed quite as much as those aforementioned styles of instruments are guitars like this, Mayonnaise. Uh, well, I say guitars like this, but have you ever seen a guitar like this? Probably not. So Mayonnaise, for anyone unaware, is a wonderful Polish brand and they're actually celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. Uh, this guitar happens to be part of that lineup of the celebration. So this is from the 40th anniversary collection. A Regius six string custom color, gorgeous piece of art. That's basically all I have to say about this thing's aesthetics. It's a very, very three dimensional top. 
um, goes beyond the third dimension, in fact, into the fifth, because it's a 5A grade quilt maple top. Let me just run off a couple of other specs about this thing that you may not be aware of, because they are quite unusual, and it always throws me for a bit of a loop when I look up what they're actually constructed with. So the bodywood is called sassafras, which you may or may not have heard of before, but it's just a very satisfying word to say. Now the neck, bear with me here, because there's a lot of words about to go into this, and you may see, hopefully on that shot there on the side, it's a very well constructed hunk of wood. It's not single piece, so what you've got going on here is wenge, mahogany, purple heart, and maple, all smushed together to make this very, very comfortable, um, super smooth, super fast feeling neck. Other basic specs, you've got bare knuckle TKO pickups, um, single volume, three position pickup selector switch, and a coil split on the volume control, and a um, through body Charla bridge. Basic specs are kind of always the same with Mayonez guitars, but what really makes them stand out to me, I think they kind of have this unfair association with only doing heavy gain, high levels of distortion, which they do extremely well, but the articulation and the clarity that you need to deliver those tones well also means that they happen to be very dynamic. Despite having hotter pickups and despite having a very sleek, flat feeling neck, um, which is also this really nice satin finish as well. It kind of puts me in mind of how Music Man finished their necks as well. Similar kind of thing. But it actually is a lot more capable than perhaps it gets credit for. And I'm going to start with some cleaner tones before, of course, advancing to some higher gain stuff too. But let me just show you what this thing can do in a different context. What I may call articulate and super clear, you may call bright. It certainly is a bright sounding instrument. The Regius always has this um, very authoritative kind of high end to it, but it also has a lot of mid-range thickness, which we're gonna explore with some higher gain. Check it out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so hopefully what came across there is it's extremely fun to play with this kind of sound. Obviously I manipulated it there with having a lot of gain and a lot of mid-range, but these things just, notes leap out of my Inez guitars and harmonics just kind of sing naturally above any note that you play and it's very responsive to your right hand input, or your picking hand input rather, um, extremely comfortable to operate with your fretboard fingering as well. So they're just extremely well refined instruments and obviously for their 40th anniversary, they weren't content enough with the regular beauteous works that they throw out uh, to us very regularly, and very kindly. They really wanted to up the game to celebrate the anniversary and this is what they've done. So you can check out, there's a few other instruments from this 40th anniversary collection as well that I think are all really nice. This one stood out to me though, and was certainly my favorite to play of the bunch. So there we go, guitar number three. Now, guitar number four, this is gonna be something that I think you're all gonna like, at least if you like what we regularly do. This thing turned up this morning, and uh, I was very excited to have a go. So, Collings is a very well-known, very well-established brand but for a brand that is so significant and so well known, they're quite, um, they're quite an enigma, at least over here, because you just don't see them very often. They really don't turn up in great numbers, and when they do, they're pretty much always pre-sold. Uh, but I think at least one acoustic and two electrics turned up today. And I'm very pleased they did so, and I'm very pleased I got the opportunity to explore them and the time to include them in today's video. So it's fairly obvious what this is trying to do. I'm not going to go in depth with too many specs here, only that this is a really nice tobacco sunburst finish, obviously. Very, very comfortable guitar. And to me, this kind of feels like, I've had the fortune to play a couple of vintage instruments, not too many, but you can tell when they, um, when old guitars have been properly loved, and maybe they've had a little bit of rest, restoration work done to them, um, not, not structurally or anything like that, but in terms of just cleaning them up, you know, giving them a bit of TLC. That's kind of what this feels like. This feels like an old guitar that's been restored a little bit, for lack of a better term here. That may not be your thing. You may like that old, beaten up, broken in kind of feel. To me, this feels a little bit more authentic perhaps. It feels a little bit more comfortable. It feels a little bit more honest as well. Like it's lived a life, but it doesn't really want to talk about it that much unless you ask certain protruding questions. And that's what I'm going to try and do by way of these next tones. Let's check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
So not a whole lot of gain. I didn't want to play with a lot of distortion there. I wanted to show you how responsive it is to not just the level of its output, but also how it changes its tone. It's kind of a little bit of a chameleon and it really excels in that, that kind of gain range just on the edge of breakup. Of course, that's how a lot of ES style guitar players like to operate and for very good reason, but it's not that easy always to find an instrument that is prepared to cooperate with that kind of approach. You don't have to worry about that with Collings guitars. So this i35 LC Vintage, this particular one, the Tobacco Sunburst, personally, I preferred, but the Cherry one is just as gorgeous and just as responsive. Not a bad offering for the semi-hollow category for November, anyway. So that leads us to the final. By no means leaving the, be uh, the worst till last. We're gonna leave probably the most special thing till last. And this is something that a lot of you did see because I know a lot of you watched the video. Uh, and this guitar was, to me anyway, a total surprise. I had no idea this thing was even in the works. Bernie Marsden is a name a lot of people will know. Um, one of the original, or, or certainly early, early days guitar players in Whitesnake and now a very prolific blues, blues rock player uh, in his own right. And the man has an impressive, enviable collection of guitars. He has no shortage of the things. So for him to put his name to something from a brand that he, as far as I know, had no previous connection with and, you know, make stunning instruments in their own right as well, Nick Huber guitars, but this is not a partnership that I saw coming personally. But now that it has, I'm very pleased because this thing is just one of the best sounding and playing single cut uh, experiences that I've ever had the pleasure to experience. So very special, very limited edition guitar as well. Uh, Nick Huber don't make a lot of instruments anyway. This happens to be one of only 12 pieces worldwide. Obviously this is the gold top. I've always had a bit of a thing for gold top guitars. All the little exquisite details I can't do justice to on this live video here to show you, but you can check them out on our website, of course, via the lovely images. And I'm sure this thing will be smattered all over the um, Instagram and Facebook pages as well. I'm just gonna show you how it sounds. And out of respect for Nick and his wonderful finishing techniques, I'm gonna put the pick down and just go finger style because I do not want any of my DNA left on this fine beast.
Ah, that's nice. That's nice. So even with not a lot of gain, uh, it just excels. It kind of takes off, just like that Collings did, really. And considering that that was a semi-hollow instrument, and this is indeed not, although I do think there's probably some chambering going on here because it's a nice weight. It's nice kind of, um, it's light for a Les Paul, to kind of put it that way. So I presume there is some chambering going on. It's a mahogany body with a really nice maple top. Uh, Madagascan rosewood neck, which is a little bit different. Again, you'll see the details of that via the pictures on our website. Uh, cream T Bernie Marsden Signature Edition P90 pickups in this guitar. And it's a Nick Huber, so it just plays pristine. It just plays absolutely superbly. And it sounds absolutely glorious as well. And I think it's a very worthy contender for the fifth spot on this month's list. So that is our picks for this month. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with everything that was here? Do you think they each earned their rightful place? Or did you happen to see something from us this month that you thought, why wasn't that included? That was absolutely glorious and I went as far as to buy it myself. If that's you and you feel that way about a particular instrument, let me know down in the comments below what you think. But that's it. Those are my choices for this month. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. As I said before, comment and share your thoughts. Share this video with your guitar playing pals. Why not as well? And if you want to find out any more information about any of these guitars or any of the other products in the video, all the links will be down in the description below. I'm going to see you next week for another live video, but hopefully I'll see you once again in the month of December and we'll do all this again, depending on what turns up next month. How about that? Let me know if you'd like to see that as well down in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great week, folks. Take very good care of yourselves. I'm going to play you out, and I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.